Russ. Yes. Good to see you, man. Thank you for being patient. Oh, that's okay. It's my pleasure to be here. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to getting into it. Before we get into Sojourn, I want to know, first and foremost, as a musician, you know, four years ago, we were trying to figure out how we were going to get out of this pandemic and how it was going to affect everything. How did you get through that time period as an artist? And how did it either influence this album or the way that you do things now? Uh, you know, I, I, I think in my particular case, uh, Joe, is like I, I, I'm i not a guy that's out gigging all the time and depending on that for my living. I'm at a, I'm at a stage in life where I've I've uh, I'm semi retired, I would say, you know, except for my music, what my music career as it stands today. Uh, so I, I, it didn't affect me that way in terms of making a living. I, I did fine in that regard. Um, it was it was a bad time, though, of course. I mean, just just the, everybody who went through the, the whole personal side, we all lost friends, or at least I know, certainly in my world here, we, we lost friends. And, uh, you know, it, it was it was a, a pretty large uh, um, interruption in our life. I mean, our city here, what happened was we're, we're in a, a junior city, Halifax, Nova Scotia. And a lot of people during that period when everybody was working from home, people like from cities like Toronto and Montreal said, hey, we don't have to be here. And, and our city started to explode in terms of population with all kinds of new people coming in. So it, it's a, it, was, it was an interesting, there was some interesting things like that, but in terms of personal effect on me, fortunately not too bad. I, I, I had it, I got COVID. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I... <laughs> and so did my wife and everybody in my family. We all had, but we all we we all took the, the 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 necessary vaccinations, and it was pretty minor compared to what happened to some people. Yeah. So, how how much was this album influenced by living through that? Uh, you know, this this album is is almost as some people have said it's it's, it's like an autobiography of my life. Uh, people who know me well, I mean, it's it's my fourth album. But this one here, uh, I, I reached back to things that happened previously and some of the tough times in my life, some of the joyful times in my life. And, and, and a lot of this music, probably all of this music is, it, it, it has those kinds of fingerprints on it. So what are you ultimately hoping the listener gets from this album? I want, I want the listener to feel something from this album. I want, I, uh, I want I want somebody to listen to it and say, you know, it's it's uh, made me feel a certain way or think a certain way. Uh, instrumental music, you know, the kind of instrumental music I do, I, I, I think I think it can say more than words sometimes in a way the listener is is as much of the process. And and they they write the lyrics in their own mind not not so much in words, but in feelings and, and, and imagery. And I've had I've had people that have listened to this album and parts of it, you know, I've had, I've had some people say, "Wow, this 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 tune here really had me in tears," uh, you know, and and not that I want to make anybody be in tears, but I, I know that I'm communicating when when somebody says that to me, and that that means a lot to me as, as an artist. So let's get into the journey. Take me back to where you were born and raised, and how did the guitar, how did music, and more specifically jazz, become your life? Okay, well, I, I'm born and raised in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, a small town in, on the east coast of Canada. Uh, music in my life, my, uh, the earliest music recollection I have is, is my grandmother uh, on my dad's side coming to the house and visiting. We had an old piano downstairs and she would sit on that piano and just it was the most magical thing I ever heard. I, of course, I found out after I grew up and knew more about her, she played for the silent movies. You know, which was a totally improvised thing. She'd just sit there and look at the movie going by, and that was that was her era. So, starting from that, uh, once I I was a young teenager, I started playing guitar. I was influenced by Chet Atkins, some of the pop music that was happening at that time. It would have been Bill Haley in the Comets, and you know th that kind of uh, thing. Uh, then the, eventually the Ventures. Those were the things that got me playing the instrument. And then, of course, uh, after that, I, I like a lot of people, I, I, I wound up in, in pop music and, and playing in bands and touring, but in, in bands playing pop music, mostly cover bands at that stage. Uh, next to that, I, I, I then I got into business. 
uh, and, and, and I opened a, a music store, which turned into a chain here in Atlantic Canada. It, it took on a life of its own. So during that period, even though I kept playing, I started playing jazz. Uh, I got together with friends and, and started to learn jazz standards, and I built up a huge catalog of those. And that really brought my musical education up to another level. Uh, and I didn't start writing until I was about 45 years old. Wow. And, and since then, I have a book of all my compositions. Out. I've got, uh, I think, four albums now uh, with, of original stuff. And it's really become a large part of my life now. And now that I've retired, I sold that business about 15 years ago. I've, I've, I've put my life back into music full time that way. So the, one of the big moments for us early on is uh, are the concerts, the live music that we see. What was the first maybe live jazz show or show in general that you saw that blew you away, that made you think, I want to be up there one day doing that? Oh, gosh. There, well, there, there were lots of them. I mean, right from the early days, I remember going to see a, a John Coltrane concert, and, and I didn't understand it, but I certainly loved what was happening. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was interesting. Uh, after, after, it, when I really started thinking jazz, I started listening to George Benson a lot. Uh, he was one of my favorite uh, guitarists and Howard Roberts. And I went to uh, probably one of the best concerts I ever saw in my life was to see George Benson in Chicago. I was there attending the music, the NAM show, which is the music trade show in, in, at McCormick Place in Chicago. And uh, George Benson happened to be playing in town at that time. And uh, my wife looked at it and found, found that out. So we, we just said, after, after the work day today, we're going to that show tonight. So we got outside the hotel, jumped in a cab and gave him the address. And, and he said, you sure you wanna go there? <laughs> we said, oh yes, George Benson's playing. So he took us about 30 minutes into the, into the black section of Chicago and we're just a couple of country bumpkins. Apparently that wasn't a good idea at that time, but we didn't know. And we got there and we went and, and, and the guy says, you sure you wanna get out here? And we went into the club and uh, we were well treated. We, they gave us a seat right in front of the stage. I heard the best concert I think I ever heard. Masquerade was just on the charts at that time, this, this masquerade. And he was finishing up some contracts in smaller venues. This was only about a 200 seat club. And, we just, and he had that band and those players and he was just on fire. What, what a show. So that really that really propelled me to really dive in heavier jazz at that time, and and from there on, of course. Yeah, you know, John Coltrane's one of those people that when I ask people if they could get into a time machine, they would love to go see him. So the fact that you actually got to see that live, that's pretty mm -hmm. phenomenal. Yes, absolutely. I wish I knew I I knew what I know today to to see him then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I wasn't equipped to really get everything out of that concert that I should have, but my God, it was good to go there. How did you get this split acumen to be an entrepreneur and a musician? How did that right left brain work for you? How did they feed off each other? You know, um, in a way, I, I, I think it was good. You know, um, there's a lot of good musicians, uh, people that are, are considered good players that, that, that are very mechanical or good at numbers or you know it's not it's not just an exclusive thing so for the uh, the music business for me um i it was a need really i, I in our in our city there, there just wasn't good stores the right equipment being a guy that that spent years now on the road and playing i knew that we didn't have that in our city at, at the level it should have been so i started i started a, a retail business so so I'm curious, you talked about going on the road and you played with a variety of bands. Undoubtedly, you know, you were young and you had to be around luminaries and, and people that had been around for a long time. What did you ultimately learn from all those musicians that benefited the way that you carried on in your life as a musician yourself? Well, you know, it's, it, it's obviously it's just being close to them. And they certainly, when I, when I played with, guys that were more experienced and better than me as a player that brings you up you, you know you, you realize what you have to to have to be there so and also it's 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 inspiring it inspires you you know whether I'm playing with them or I'm just there close to them or seeing them or hanging around with them you learn something about 
the kind of people they are that, uh, you know, I, I would say in general in the music business, you know, I, I not you don't meet too many undesirables. Most of them are really good people. You know, you, you can't be a great musician unless you have some, you know, you got to understand the world and people and you, you can't be selfish because it's a giving thing. Yeah. What has been the consistent thing that you've loved the most about being a professional musician? What has kept you in the game, helped you evolve, release your albums? What has been that urge for you? Yeah, that's that's not that's not an easy one to just pop it out. But I, I, I would say, I mean, I love I love performing live. I love playing live. And, 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 and when you're in front of your audience and you, you get that feedback, that's that's good. But but a lot of it is just, um, you know, when it comes to the composition side of it, you know, it's just I an idea comes to me and I just have to carry it through to the end. You know, it's like. I, I I get that seed idea and it's not, I have to follow the train until it's done. So why do you love jazz? Uh, it's harmonically richer. It's so much richer, you know, after all those years of playing pop music and I'm not dissing it because, you know, it's, it's necessary for, we, we all, we all went through entry level music, all of us players. But, but at some point, you, you, if you stay in music, you, you, you want something richer, you know, and you start listening to uh, things that have interesting uh, structure, harmonically, rhythmically, and, and it, gets, it gets a lot deeper. And that's why I love it. I, I love that side of it, but I also love the fact that you've got a, such a bigger toolkit to, to convey your feelings with. That's, so you've had that's an harder interest... to... Yeah. Sorry. No, 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 you're good. I was just curious. You've had an interesting dichotomy of being on one side of the music business and on the other side as a musician. Are you yes. encouraged by where it's gone? You know, media formats have changed. We've gone from LPs to CDs, to back to LPs, the digital, and musicians have gone from kind of having more ownership to less, and, and there's all these creative controls. But overall, here in 2024, are you encouraged by the way that music is disseminated and by the way that the musicians in the jazz world specifically are being embraced and the way that they're being perceived? Well, the jazz world, I, you know, we have to be honest, it's a, it's a minor art form in, our, in, in North America. It's, it's, you know, it's probably a lot bigger art form in, in Europe. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a fact. The other thing is, of course, and, and it's sad, but the whole food chain is broken. There's just no money. I mean, uh, oh yeah, I got a million plays on Spotify. Well, that and two dollars will buy you a cup of coffee. Yeah, you know, and that's where we are. It's a, it's, it's, it's a sad story. I mean, the people that I know, the best musicians that I play with, they do it for the love of it because yeah. they, it's, it's in their core. It's baked into their DNA, and that's why we do it. Uh, it doing it for money and doing it for a living these days. Anybody who can, I have great admiration for them. It's very tough. It is very tough. It is. So at the end of the day, everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, fans, everybody that's worked with you, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh, my heavens. The, I, I don't even know if I could answer that question. Uh, you know, I because I, I never I never think about that. I, I've never asked myself that question. <laughs> yeah. Probably I should have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm somebody, I, I care about people and, and uh, I love conveying something that makes somebody feel good. If my music makes somebody feel good, I'm a happy guy, you know, and maybe, maybe hardly anything can make me happier than that, you know, outside of being with my family and my, my uh, children and grandchildren. Uh, it, that's, that's, that's what puts gas in my tank. Yeah. For sure. So, so Jern is the, the latest album. You have three others. If anyone wants to pick up the albums in the right form to, to really benefit you, see you live, delve into your world anymore, how can they do that? Probably Bandcamp would be a good one. You can, you can buy the physical uh, CDs or you can buy the digital copies. Bandcamp also allows you to take very high quality formats, which I like. You know, if you want a flak file or a full wave, you can get it. So I'm, I guess I'm giving them a plug, but I, I, I like the way that they do business. And the artist gets a little bit of money out of it. You know, they have their commission, but it's it's, a, it's better for the artist. So I would say, please go there. And, uh, I'd love, 
love it if anybody would grab onto that. I totally agree, and that was one thing through the pandemic that really came to light was how good Bandcamp takes care of their artists, and they we need bastions like that that exist. Absolutely, that's sure. that's that's true, Joe. Yeah. Russ, thank you for your story, man. Thank you for your work, your music. It's beautiful. It just you just seem like you're a very self-actualized cat, and it's so good to run into you, man. Oh well, thank you very much, Joe. It's my pleasure, man. And before you.